What up, everybody? Before I get started, I have some BMF-related news to announce. If you haven't heard yet, BMF has been renewed for Season 4. And even better news than that, on the eve of BMF Season 3, it was announced that a judge granted the Real Big Meech early release and is now set to be released early 2025. So we can expect a lot more from the BMF brand in the real near future. Get me to the Season 3 breakdown. Starting with the opening scene of OG Meech and T in 2007 getting ready for trial. As Meech wanted to take a plea while Terry said he wanted to take it to trial. It had been two years since the two last spoke. And they had different opinions on how they got to where they were at. T thought it was because Meech was too flashy. But what really took them down was T running his mouth on the phone all the time. He also said when me and Meech first started out, we were one family, but things changed. Now keep in mind, eventually Meech and Terry will split and T's side will start being called 263. This is why at the family dinner at the beginning of season two, OGT said, everyone at this table will always be 263. Getting us back to our current BMF timeline of somewhere around 1990. Picking up where season two left off, with Marquisha being shot by Boom Soldier Saint. This set in motion, Terry planned to get revenge on Saint and wanted to pull the trigger to take Saint out himself and send a message. Meanwhile, Meech was also picking up where season two left off after Goldie had to flee town for killing Big Mike, with Meech meeting up with Rodney Crean at Magic City about cleaning his money. Greeny stood his ground in the negotiation with telling Meech that he wanted 15% up front followed by 10% on everything after that. After Meech agreed, Greeny introduced Meech to an exotic strip club called Platinum Palace. When first arriving at this club, we saw something very interesting happen. Meech was interested in one particular dancer, and Greeny pretty much told Meech that Shorty was off limits, then gave her a hand gesture and sent her to a table with NBA players. So it will be very interesting to see who this particular female is and her relationship with Rodney Green moving forward. But while at Platinum Palace, Meech was introduced to a new crew in Atlanta from Detroit connected to Sterling Black. This is where Meech met a guy named Duffy, the leader of the Detroit crew, as well as Stax, who is Ty Washington's wife's uncle, a guy named Diesel, who said he was born and bred in Detroit, and Rip, who is a hustler and a rapper. Duffy is also a music producer, and after Meech first heard Rip rap, he told him that he needs to get out the drug game and focus on music full time. But after being introduced to the Detroit crew, Stack spotted Remy Ransom in the club and a fight broke out between the two sides. After the fight, the crew regrouped and Meech was telling them that he had 250 keys coming in. But for whatever reason, Stax wasn't interested in working with Meech and left, telling Meech that trouble follows him wherever he goes pretty much blaming Meech for Ty Washington getting killed. But when Stax left, they told Meech that Stax was the one who had ties to all of Ty Washington's Atlanta distributors. So when Meech got the weight down from Detroit, he gave Stax the keys for 25 k apiece, cutting 5 k off the price of each brick, offering Stax a deal too good to refuse. But when Stax's crew initially walked out on Meech, this is when we found out that there was already a war going on in Atlanta between Remy Ransom's Techwood crew and another crew trying to plant their flag called the Miami Killers. And with BMF trying to plant their flag, it just became a three-crew war in the streets of Atlanta. Meanwhile, back in Detroit, Terry was waiting next to Markeisha in the hospital for her to wake up. And as soon as she woke up, Terry told her that he was going to murk Saint, saying, I can't let the streets think that it's okay to pop shots into my woman. Then we were introduced to the Techwood neighborhood ran by Remy Ransom and come to find out that Remy Ransom isn't such a bad guy after all. Just a man trying not to let outsiders come into his city and take over. Remy is like the Robin Hood of his neighborhood, taking care of all the children, walking them to school, and even giving them lunches to bring to school. We also found out that part of the reason why Remy acts the way he does is because his younger brother was brutally killed when he was younger. 
And it was at this point we were introduced to the Red Dog Task Force, which stands for Run Every Drug Dealer Out of Georgia. This was because the government was trying to get Atlanta cleaned up for the 96 Olympics. And the Red Dogs had a green light to violate your civil rights anytime they wanted, as we saw them beating down Remy Ransom and his lieutenant. As for the Detroit Task Force Drano, Bryant got suspended from the police force for suppressing a murder weapon, his son went to juvie, and Detective Veronica Jen had also been temporarily removed from the task force. Jen also got a new partner, Detective Kobe Amberson, who is the daughter of Councilman Amberson. So it'll be very interesting to see the dynamics of this partnership and if there's more to Detective Amberson than what meets the eye. Get me to Meech's conversation with Sterling back. Sterling straight up told Meech that all Terry been worried about since Meech left town was looking after his reputation and trying to get revenge for his girl Markeisha. He also told Meech that Terry said he wanted to take out Saint himself. And at this point, Meech went over Terry's head and told Sterling that it can't go down like that to make sure that one of Sterling's crew did the job to not let Terry get involved. But when Terry found out that Sterling's crew took out Saint and didn't let him kill Saint himself, Terry was furious. Again, primarily worried about his reputation. But Sterling said that they would keep it a secret and make everyone think that T took out Saint himself. And we saw this play out when Terry was talking to his crew to announce that they were getting rid of the record shop that he was buying a restaurant to do business out of instead. T told his crew that Saint had been dealt with and that he would ride for anyone in his crew the same way, leading them to believe that he took out Saint himself. Even when Terry went to tell Markeisha that Saint was gone, he also let Markeisha believe that he took out Saint himself. Like I said in my Terry Flannery backstory breakdown last week, Meech is really the only person Terry ever felt comfortable enough to let his guard down around and to be vulnerable around. But one very interesting thing to keep in mind about Saint's death was after he was killed, Detective Jen and Amberson were at the scene and Jen was pocketing a few bricks of cocaine while her partner was outside getting the fingerprint kit. So it will be very interesting to see how this plays out moving forward. Because keep in mind last season when Denise was busted with five bricks, Bryant and Jen only reported three bricks being seized. So what is Bryant and Jen plan on doing with all this weight they are collecting? Or are they low-key cocaine addicts off screen? But while at the hospital, at the same time he told Markeisha about Saint, T also let Markeisha know the news that he bought a new house for him, her, and her kids to move into. There would only be a few more days before everything was finalized. So when Markeisha got out of the hospital, T brought her to his parents' house to stay for the night until they could move into their own house. And this is when he told his parents that he was moving out because he was tired of them always being up in his business. At this point, Lucille told Charles that he could move into Terry's room so she don't have to sleep next to him no more, as Lucille plans on going forward with the divorce. Lucille also plans on going to a new church where everyone doesn't know her, so most likely we've seen the last of Pastor Swift on BMF. Back in Atlanta, Meech and his crew got shot at by two of Remy Ransom's soldiers with Rip the Rapper getting hit in the process, but Rip did survive getting shot. But while Remy's boys were shooting at Meech, the Miami killers pulled up and took out Remy's hitters, showing the dynamics of the three crew war moving forward. Episode 1 ended with Meech showing up at a club with hopes to talk to Glock, the leader of the Miami killers, but it didn't work out that way. His crew was greeted outside the Miami killers and the bouncers and told they weren't welcome in Atlanta and weren't welcome at that club. Then to make matters even worse for Meech, as his crew was leaving to go to another club, Remy Ransom pulled up and dropped off the dead body of Dykes, Meech's first Atlanta distro who he met at Freak Nick. And there you have it, BMF is back with a bang. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.